Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green foods graveyard synergy deck called Lurking as a combination of Lurker of the Lock and Feasting Troll King. So those are the two key cards in the deck. Feasting Troll King is a card we're trying to reanimate as soon as possible by milling it over into the graveyard and then sacrificing three foods to return the Feasting Troll King from the graveyard back into play. And of course the Feasting Troll King being a 7-6 with Vigilance and Trample is quite powerful if we can cheat that into play as soon as possible. And then the other big part of the deck is Emery, which is a 3-mana 1-2, but she costs 1 less to cast for each artifact we control. And of course food tokens count as artifacts as well for Emery, so we can pretty easily play her for 1 or 2 mana. And then when Emery enters the battlefield, we get to put the top 4 cards of our library into our graveyard. So that helps us find the Feasting Troll King in the graveyard, and put a bunch of artifacts in the graveyard as well. For the last ability on Emery, which says we can tap Emery and choose an artifact card in our graveyard, and we can cast that card this turn, which is also quite powerful, since Emery can very easily turn into a card draw engine if we can return some cheap artifacts, like the Golden Egg, which is an artifact that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, and also counts as food for the Feasting Troll King and all the other food synergies, and we can very easily sacrifice the Golden Egg to just make mana or to just uh, gain some life, and then get them back with Emery over and over again to draw more cards. Then another powerful artifact in the deck is Witch's Oven, a 1 mana artifact that we can tap, sacrifice a creature and then make a food token, and if the sacrificed creature's toughness was 4 or greater, then we get to make 2 food tokens instead. So besides just helping us speed up the process of reanimating Feasting Troll King by making some uh, food tokens, the Witch's Oven can also protect our Feasting Troll King from exile-based removal spells, for example, if the opponent tries to exile the Troll King and we have a Witch's Oven untapped, then we can simply sacrifice the Troll King and uh, make two food tokens and make sure the Troll King doesn't get exiled, or also just in response to any removal spell, we can still get a bit of value, get those food tokens, and make it easier to get back the Troll King a second time. And a great synergy with the Witch's Oven and the entire deck basically is a Merfolk Secret Keeper, which is a 1 mana 04. So at 4 toughness, if we sacrifice it to the Oven, it gives us 2 food tokens. And then the ability Venture Deeper for 1 mana lets us put the top 4 cards of our library into our graveyard. So that also helps with the self mill theme and just helps us put the Troll King in the graveyard in the first place. And then the final artifact in the deck that we can get back with Emery is the Great Henge, which is also great if we already have a Feasting Troll King in play, because then it's only going to cost double green for a legendary artifact that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And then it taps to add double green to our mana pool and also gain two life. So even if we don't need the mana, we can always tap the Great Henge each turn just to gain two life. And then whenever a non-token creature enters battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. So we don't need to cast a creature, just needs to enter the battlefield, which means that if we reanimate a Feasting Troll King with a great engine play, we also get to draw a card and put a plus one plus one counter on it, which is quite powerful. And then looking at the rest of the deck, we've got our Secret Keeper at one, Gilded Goose, which has a ton of synergy in this deck. We can easily generate food so the Gilded Goose can keep generating extra mana to help us ramp out our Planeswalkers, for example. And then in the late game, it turns into a food-making engine as well, so a great mana sink. Then we've got our four Witches Ovens, don't mind having more than one in play at the same time, as a bit of extra insurance. And then, uh, of course, we've got our four Golden Eggs, counts as food, great with Emery. We've got our four Emerys, and then, of course, four copies of Oko, Thief of Crowns, which is a main interaction that we have in this deck, turning opposing creatures into 3-3 three, three Elks, which are a lot more manageable and then uh, making even more food with the plus two. Don't use the minus five all that often, but every now and then you might steal an opposing creature as well. Then we've got uh, four copies of Wicked Wolf, which is also quite important, since that gives us a bit more interaction, being able to fight opposing creatures, and then very difficult to deal with for some of the control decks that rely on damage-based removal spells, since we can simply sack some food to make the Wicked Wolf indestructible, and that also gives us another creature to help us uh, ramp out the Great Henge, 
we can just play Wicked Wolf, maybe sack some food tokens to make it a bit bigger, and then cast uh, a Great Henge on the following turn, which can start drawing us even more cards. Then we also have two copies of Tamyo, Collector of Tales, since we are a blue-green deck with a bunch of Graveyard Synergy, so Tamyo fits in perfectly, helping us maybe mill over a Feasting Troll King with the plus one ability, and then a minus three can always return something that we milled over earlier with Emery or the Secret Keeper, so we got quite a bit of selection when it comes to Tamyo's minus three, and then the passive can also protect us from discard and sacrifice effects, which is nice. And then of course the full playset of the Feasting Troll King, which we are mainly hoping to mill over and reanimate, but we're very capable of just hard casting for 6 mana. We've got Gilded Goose, so that gives us a bit more ramp too. And we also have 3 copies of Castle Garenbrick in the mana base, which we can basically use to play our Feasting Troll King on turn 5, since we can pay for mana, tap Castle, and add 6 green mana that we can spend on casting creature spells or activate abilities of creatures, so that's great for the Troll King of course. And then the rest of the mana base, we've got 5 basic islands, 7 basic forests, 4 breeding pools and 4 temple of mystery to help us scry and find the missing combo pieces. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Decent opening hands, temple's a little bit awkward, but... They also fixed the, the goose sound, so it actually sounds like a goose now. Alright, that's not a great draw. Definitely don't need a third oven. Alright, Emery is going to do some magic here. Mill over Feasting Troll King would be nice. Two Wicked Wolves instead. Not quite. Alright, so next turn I can try to self-mill into a Feasting Troll King. And then if I can cast the Troll King I can play it Great Henge. And then we would be in pretty good shape. So that's the, the hope here. Domri's ambush, so... Emery's going into the oven. Still gets the plus one counter since it has two targets, so it doesn't fizzle. Come on, Troll King. One time. Yeah. There we go. Easy peasy. I could play another one. Um, against Gruul, I guess it's fine, just gain a bit more life. I don't think they're gonna destroy my Henge. And I've got double Witches Oven up, which means that if they somehow kill the Troll King, I can sacrifice it, make two foods and bring it back. Just gonna take four, I think. I could trade, but then I'm gonna be struggling to get the Troll King back in play. Unless I find another creature. Yeah. We're basically only taking two a turn since we've got a great hench. So it's not a big deal. Alright, so I don't think I should play this first. I should play Secret Keeper first, see what I draw. Eh, I guess never mind, that was a mistake. I should have I should have played Temple first probably. For some reason I thought I was gonna mill myself. Golden egg. 
I mean, I guess it's fine, just cantrips have got a ton of mana anyway, and it's a food. So what do I want to do? I could attack with the Troll King and basically trade for the Questing Beasts. Because then I'll have two foods from the Secret Keeper and the Egg coming up, so I'll be able to get the Troll King back. And this is Enter the Battlefield, so it will make uh, us draw extra cards, I think. I'm actually okay trading here. Since I've got the Secret Keeper that can block as well. They could also double block Twister and Pelt Collector, but that's fine by me. So Secret Keeper can block Pelt Collector. Probably gonna sacrifice it end of turn. Because I want to have more Witches' Ovens untapped. Gain some life. Alright, so I'll scry first. Another Troll King. Yeah, that sounds decent. I've got six mana. Then I get to draw. Bring back Troll King from the graveyard. Uh, the, the Secret Keeper can block Questing Beast. It only has one power. Yeah, it's not legendary, so we can have more than one. Well, opponents playing some big stuff themselves. Taking nine here. They'll start to end up. On top. Go, go, Troll King. Definitely should have used my castle there. Would have gotten me one more mana. But that's fine, I can still cast Oko. But if I had drawn the wolf, I would have been sad. And then I guess Oko can turn Beast into a 3 3. It loses Death Touch now. And do I attack with my troll? Don't think I want to trade it. And eh, maybe it's fine, because I've got the food to get it back right away. So yeah, attacking and trading for the Nullhide Ferox seems like a fine deal. Opponent takes it. Alright, I could beat that to... So if they play second questing beast, I'm pretty sure that they still have to only keep one, but I guess then they would keep the other one. But then I go block, block, and go to one. So I'm sure I could die to some stuff here, but I'm not that on board. Like another Domri's Ambush, I guess, would do it. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. So it was looking pretty sketchy, but then we milled over the Troll King with the Secret Keeper, and we got the ball rolling. Alright, this hand's a little awkward. No early plays that affect the board. But I do have Oko into Wicked Wolf, which can be good enough in some games. I'm gonna try it for science, but could definitely be too slow in some games. Yeah, that's a good draw. I'm gonna self-mill, make use of that blue mana. And the next turn I get to go Oven plus Secret Keeper. Of course, hoping to mill Feasting Troll King, some useful artifacts in case I draw Emery later. So nothing too useful. But the Secret Keeper still for toughness for the oven, so represents two food tokens. And isn't that what life is all about? Making food tokens. Hmm. 
this temple poses an interesting question because that represents a fourth untapped land for me to curve Oko into Wicked Wolf. So it's possible I should not play my Witch's Oven here and just play Scryland into Secret Keeper. Although I'm not sure what my opponent's playing, blue-red, some sort of Phoenix deck. Alright, Great Hench could be a turn 5 play. Yeah, I don't hate it. Let's play the Oven. Alright, so Oko, make a food, seems fine. So just by making more food we can make it so we can potentially curve Wicked Wolf into Great Hench. Alright, this is perfect. Make another food. And then I still have the Witch's Oven up, in case I somehow need to sack the Wicked Wolf. And then next turn I get to play the Great Henge into Secret Keeper, potentially. Thrill Discard Phoenix. Opponent needs a good Phoenix turn. If they have a second Phoenix, then we have a game. If they just bring one Phoenix back, then I think we'll be fine. Alright, radical idea. So only one Phoenix. Thanks, Oko. Ooh, I feel so alive. One bite, and all your cares are gone. That way my Great Henge is one cheaper. And now I get to go Great Henge into, I guess, Goose first. Into Secret Keeper. And that's not a bad turn. Alright, no need to sacrifice anything to the oven, I don't think. I, I could sack the Secret Keeper. Don't really need the, the blocker. And I might want the oven untapped and more food in play. Alright, so we'll start by scrying. Alright, Emery, that's uh, potentially quite good. So I'm basically looking for Troll King at this point. So let's play Emery and hope to find ourselves a Troll King. Alright, no Troll King yet. So I can play Tamio plus what would I name? Or I could get something back from the graveyard like this Wicked Wolf, which is also quite decent. And then Oko probably turns a Crackling Drake into an Elk. So Tamiyo Plossing is quite valuable just because of the potential of milling a Troll King. So maybe I should still Plus. But then what do I name? Do I just name Troll King? But I want it in the graveyard right now. 
I could name Wicked Wolf, but I only have two left in the deck. Yeah, I think I'm still gonna name Wicked Wolf. Alright. Wow, we got there. We got a Wicked Wolf in hand and a Troll King in the graveyard. Living the dream here. And draw another one. Alright, things are going quite well here. Oh dear. Wicked Wolf attacks. I'll keep the Goose on defense in case we need to jump and save one of our Planeswalkers. So our deck is kind of going off. If our opponent had found two copies of Arclight Phoenix, then the game would be a little bit more competitive. But right now, it's just not even close. And our opponent just has to scoop it up here. Well, that was a pretty impressive showing of the deck. Alright, what do we think of this one? Yeah, having Troll King in hand is not ideal. I do get to mill with Secret Keeper and then play an Emery, but it's going to be kind of a slow Emery, no food tokens in sight. So if I mill over a Witch's Oven, I can sack Secret Keeper to make food, but I have the Troll Kings in hand and not in the graveyard. So I feel like this hand is like close, but kind of medium. And this is a bit better. And then I can probably ditch one Secret Keeper. Let's play the Goose. Listen to this beautiful sound. So majestic. Alright, get to play a turn to Emery. Is that the best I can do up against the uh, Golos deck? So this is probably not a great matchup if I had to guess. Just too many zombies on the ground. If I play something else, then I could play Wicked Wolf next turn using the food. Nah, let's play Emery. Nah, did not melt something amazing. So at the very least, I get to go Temple into Golden Egg, and then play the Wicked Wolf afterwards. And if I mill more with the Secret Keeper, maybe Emery will find some artifacts to get back. Uh, the artifact we really want to find is Witch's Oven and the Great Henge. But we can also sack the Golden Egg and get that back with Emery as well, so... Not a wicked wolf, so I guess I'll scry first. Alright, which is oven. I kind of want to mill that and not draw it. So I could do that by just um, milling now with the secret keeper. I guess that works. So mill with the secret keeper. And then activate Emery to get to witch's oven in play. Ooh, even a troll king. So we're kind of doing it. And then I could play the Secret Keeper, sacking food, and then sack the Secret Keeper to get two food. So I can get the Troll King in play this turn, since I'm one food short. But I can definitely get it next turn. So should I get the Secret Keeper in play and make two foods? I think I should. Since I'm not going to be short on food, but I might be short on mana.
All right, so opponent's kind of going off with their Field of the Dead. We gotta get this Troll King in play stat. So a few ways I can do that. I can get a Golden Egg back from the Graveyard with Emery, cast it. I kind of want to get the Wolf in play too. So that means I would have to put the Goose in the oven. Although my opponent is playing white, so they could have like the giant sweeper effect or time wipe, in which case I want to keep food for the wolf and if I sack to the oven then I'll be foodless and that would be pretty bad. So maybe I should just pass a turn. But then again I need the pressure from the troll king I think. All right, so this is a calculated risk. If my opponent has a sweeper I'm gonna regret this. Otherwise, I get a Troll King in play, which is good. But yeah, a Sweeper would be bad. Keeping the Suspense. They probably wouldn't do that if they already had a Sweeper, because now they lose their Zombie. Unless the mana didn't work out. Alright, so... No sweeper incoming. And now uh, I'll be able to make more food for the wolves. Beanstalk Giant will need to find Oko to turn into a 3 3 to get past it. No point in activating Emery. Alright, so the goal here is to draw as many cards as possible to find Oko. Or Taimyo to get back Oko from the graveyard. So we'll play, I guess, Golden Egg from the graveyard first. Get that value. Another Troll King. Great Henge is decent too. Can play that next turn. All right, no attacks. The fairy. Trust me. Thank me later. So they're gonna bounce the wolf for the troll king. Bounces the troll king. That's gonna make my hench more expensive. I could sack it to the oven. I kind of like that actually. Opponent doesn't get to draw a card. I get some food. They should probably attack with everyone. And 6.15. I could technically block a zombie. I don't know if I should. 15 damage down to 3. So what's my plan for next turn? I can get back Troll King from the graveyard and then play Great Henge. And then potentially still play Wicked Wolf afterwards. Let's try this. Alright, Castle Garenbrig could do some things too. I think step one is get back Troll King. Then play Great Henge. And then I could play Wicked Wolf or I could play Feasting Troll King. If I play Wicked Wolf I can potentially still draw into something cheap to play afterwards. If I play Troll King then I'll be tapped out. Maybe one mana up thanks to the castle for a green creature. So I could still play draw a goose and play it. But the wolf actually gets rid of a, a zombie as well. So I think I play the wolf. If I draw a blue creature, then I'll want to wolf. I, I won't want to use the castle. So I think I'll just not use a castle here. I guess I still have the golden egg too. All 
Alright, let's get back an egg. Maybe this is a little risky, because if I kept a 2 mana I could have sacked the food to gain 3. So I might have put myself in harm's way here. If my opponent has another Teferi bouncing one of my creatures, I guess I would go to 1. That's more like it. But I did get maximum value out of my cards at least, which is pretty important too. So do I want to make a 5-5 wolf or a 4-4 wolf? I guess I'll kind of spread out the wealth a little bit. Bit of a strange attack to be honest. Opponent only got in 2 damage. No need to sack anything to the Witch's Oven. Alright, I get to play another Wolf and a Troll potentially. So let's see how much mana do I have. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 with the Castle. So I can play both. That sounds pretty good. So... Play Troll King. Play a wolf. And I can even start attacking with my Troll King now. Probably still kill this Teferi because it's kind of scary. And do the wolves attack. Uh, one wolf can probably get in there. Emery could also attack since I'm not using the ability. Sure. So this makes sure Teferi dies. I have two wolves on defense. If they bounce one, I can still block with the other one, make it indestructible. Now what? So we'll see. Yeah, we've got uh, a nice wolf pack here. Triple wolves, with plenty of food, which means that if they do somehow have a sweeper, I can make all the wolves indestructible and still be safe. So we've got a nice recursion engine going here. Opponent with only one field of the dead. Imagine if my opponent had two or three, then this game would not have been close and I would have died a long time ago. But luckily they only got one. And at some point I can also just start sacking food to gain life if I want to. Not a golden egg. So Emery, find me an egg. Find a goose. So I want to find an Oko pretty much to shrink down this beanstalk giant. I'll, I'll scry first. Don't need oven. Still no Okos. Tamiya would also be good at getting back Oko. I could still attack with my Troll Kings and if they block with the Giants I can still just get it back. Get in some damage. The Troll does have Trample, so... Yeah, this deck is doing some powerful things. No doubt about it. Yeah, there's Tamius the next turn I can get access to Oko. And still have two mana up for a potential food token to be sacrificed. A route to make two more zombies. Oh yeah, I should have sacked the first summary to Dovon, that was a, a mistake. Should have had one more food in play. I 
And we'll just sack a food here, I think. Also probably should have sacked the egg instead of the actual food token to get it in the graveyard for Amory. But uh, let's play Tamio. Get back Oko. And our opponent concedes. Alright, well, opponent did only get one Field of the Dead in play, but uh, yeah, this was kind of a, an impressive showing once again. On the draw, with a hand that needs some uh, key pieces for it to function. Uh, milling over a Troll King would help. So it's a bit high risk, high reward based on what I mill over with the Secret Keeper and my first two draw steps. I think it might actually be a mulligan, because even if I do mill over a Troll King, I only have two ways to make food in hand. And if I don't get back Troll King, then I never get the Great Hand in play and the hand doesn't do anything. So I think I'm mulliganing. Alright, this seems better. Might be okay to get rid of the Great Henge, since I'm lacking a big creature, but if I mill over Troll King, then it would be okay. I think I'm gonna get rid of it. And then just hope to mill one over and maybe get it back with Emery later. Alright, this is probably a Cavalcade Red deck. So I would like to be able to mill myself with the Secret Keeper. So the sequencing is a little awkward, unless I wanna shock myself which I don't really want to do, but maybe it's okay. Because I'm going to be kind of tapping out for the most part. I'll play the goose for now. There's also an argument that if we expect my opponent to have a shock for the goose, that I should have the oven in place so I can at least sack my creature to get an, an extra food token. But this way I get to prevent one damage. Potentially. And now I get to both mill myself and play the Secret Keeper. Hoping for a Troll King. There we go. Alright, alright. Things are coming together nicely. Next turn I can play Oven, sack Secret Keeper, get back Troll King. Turn 3 Troll King. It's pretty good. Gotta block the ginger brutes. The oven is happening, and then I guess I might as well temple. Don't need more goose or geese. Looking for a great hench, emery, those types of cards. I could send a message by attacking with the Secret Keeper first, but this seems fine. Yeah, so we've got our Troll King, that can start pressuring Chandra, although Cavalcade is scary. Suppose I could have also kept up mana to make food with a goose to start gaining life. Might have been better. Alright, so what is Oko doing? Probably just make food? I could also instead just activate Goose and sack the food to gain life, which might be more important, honestly. Troll's definitely killing Chandra. I am not happy right now. 
So if I'm afraid of dying next turn, I should make food and gain three. Let's say my opponent plays Scampering Scorcher, that's five 1-1 one, one creatures attacking me. So I go to five, I can block two. So I'm not dead. So I guess playing Oko might be okay. Could also turn an Oven into a 3-3 three, three as an extra blocker. Could also turn the opponent's creatures into 3-3 three, three, so they deal less damage. But just sacking food and gaining life every turn with Oko is quite valuable too. Definitely a lot of decisions there. Ooh, Chandra, another one. All at Oko. That's good. Oko just gaining a 6 life here. So, can save Oko. It feels a bit like a losing play attacking Oko here. Maybe they should just be going face and hoping for the best. The Wicked Wolf is amazing. So I'll keep making food, I think. And then I can use Goose for mana to still gain 3 if I need to. Alright, the third Chandra. Fair enough. Third time's the charm. Alright, Oko will go down, but he will not be forgotten. So it's a game you're interested in. You are foul. Ooh, I feel so alive. I grace you with my. I probably should have still blocked both elementals. I don't know if my opponent played land yet in case I go land into a um, heart fire, for example. But I don't think it would matter since then they would have played land first and cast Heartfire. It's on tap. I don't think I need to sack anything. Alright, so we've got basically everything we need here. A food supply thanks to the goose. And I'll do this so I can get in more damage on my opponents. Should probably consider sacking some foods in case my opponent has like two or three burn spells to kill me a response, but with two cards in hand, five mana, there's no combination of cards that can kill me on the spot. Alright, the fourth Chandra. Well, the Troll King matches up quite favorably against the Chandra we've learned. So I'll make a food, sack of food here. I'll keep one food around, just in case. But can definitely afford to sack one. But my opponent's dead on board now, I think. They can't sack the Ginger Brood, I can attack 11, sack 2 foods, and that's game.
I didn't need the golden egg, I could have made a food token with the goose as well. Alright, that was pretty impressive. We mulliganed a somewhat sketchy hand and then got rewarded with a turn 3 Feasting Troll King. So yeah, I was pretty impressed with the deck overall. We were able to get some very quick Feasting Troll Kings in play, but we were also able to kind of outgrind the opponent just thanks to the Great Hand and some of our Planeswalkers. So yeah, not sure what to say here. I'm kind of... Uh, Blown away by how the deck performed. Probably got pretty lucky too. Like, we did get lucky to mill over the Troll King in a few instances. So that definitely played a big part in some of those wins as well. But yeah, I think the Secret Keeper is a very important addition to the deck. I didn't see many other lists necessarily play it. But yeah, the addition of Secret Keeper plus Witch's Oven making two foods and enabling all the graveyard synergies is uh, quite valuable. And then the Great Henge being an artifact that we can find with Emery is kind of just a cherry on top. So yeah, that was lurking. I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.